Hello. Thank you for including me in part of this Third World Congress of Space Renaissance International. I am Brett Hofstadt, coming to you from Folsom, California, the United States, where I am working to create an irresistible vision of a moon base that is family friendly, that is so compelling that it will have to become true after enough people wish for this to be a reality. My talk is about making a successful moon settlement an inevitable reality by activating and fo focusing the energy of children. My particular focus is about a moon settlement, but this talk and this strategy does apply to every effort, everyone's effort in the space renaissance community. So please keep that in mind. What is our vision that we share in common? It is to see humans expand peacefully and prosperously into the universe. This vision is for all of humanity, for people of every generation, every background, and there is a special place in this vision for children, which I will explain further. In reality, people are dealing with many challenges in their lives. Uh, they're tied to their computer screens, of course, with their other demands. We have to find a way to appeal to people, to pull them out of their their day-to-day -day needs, which are certainly important and, and essential, but we're trying to great, create a global movement. And so we have to find a way to activate people and inspire them and motivate them to do something different and to care about something bigger than themselves. So I propose that we reframe this scenario. The Long Now Foundation uh, does something that I love and I also try to do, which is they refer to every year in five digits instead of four. So we're in the year 0, 20, 21 now. And when you look at the scale of the universe and the scale of our future in the universe as humans, let's use this perspective. We are just getting started. Imagine what, what more we can do and become as we become an interstellar or interplanetary first uh, and then hopefully interstellar species. So our question is, how do we maximize our human potential and impact in the space renaissance, given this perspective and given our constraints as individual humans? Well, let's try and have some fun with a little equation. We're looking to maximize this function of us as humans over this time scale and, and distance of the universe, which of course is a, a epically large denominator. So we wanna find the limit of these functions and push that limit. And so rather obviously, the limit for us as humans is our lifespan. What can we do between the time we're born and we pass away? Well, this tells me, and hopefully will tell you also, that the sooner we start with people, with ourselves and with others, the better. And that means starting with children. Now, other people know this, in fact, who can we think of who tries to maximize the value and the benefit of people over their lifetime? It is corporate marketing people. We can think of many examples where corporations have been very effective, uh, sometimes you know, too effective to market their products and services to children. So these screenshots here are from a video that went viral about a kid who, as you see, is just turning two years old drinking straight from a soda can and uh, giving fist bumps to the neighbors at a party for him, apparently. I don't think any two-year-old should be drinking straight out of a can like this, but it was effective marketing uh, for some people. Now, there's also another famous story about the soda cans uh, or soda business, and it's how Steve Jobs persuaded John Scully to move to Apple from Pepsi. If you aren't familiar with this uh, quote, this line that apparently was the final push, the final, uh, the final decision point for John Scully to move to Apple, this is what Steve Jobs said to him. Now, this also relates to us because what is our mission after all? It is to make a tremendous dent in the universe with humans in a good way. So we have the benefit and the advantage, a very unique, compelling advantage to persuade and to activate kids and to inspire them with our mission 
because we are talking about the destiny of humans in the universe. Now thinking about the actual mechanics of traveling into the universe, we know that the smallest input at the beginning of a mission will have a tremendous impact later on over, over cosmic uh, solar system scale uh, distances, time and space. Well, the same is true with human life. If we can provide effective influences and uh, inputs to people when they're young, this will dramatically impact their trajectory of the rest of their life. So let's take advantage of this and let's figure out how to, how to leverage these facts and apply them for our purposes and our mission. So imagine if whatever your mission was in the space renaissance, that you had this kind of energy and enthusiasm behind it. Let's figure out how to do that for you and for us. And here's a more personal example. Uh, this happens to be my daughter when she was young. And uh, so she's a lot older now and not planning to do anything in the space renaissance, but still it's obvious and cute that uh, this, that our mission appeals to almost every child. So here's the vision that I believe we should pursue, which is a peaceful and permanent and prosperous moon base with people living on it, eventually even families. Because I believe when we reach the day when we can all, everyone on the earth, look up at the moon and know that there are people living there now, happily, and peacefully on another world, that will be the first tangible or visit physical sign of humans beyond earth. I'm looking forward to the day when we can actually see twinkling lights on the moon every night. So my vision is to inspire children to see this day and inspire them so strongly that they help us get there sooner and better. Now, whatever your effort is in the space renaissance, I encourage you to include children in this. Maybe it's learning how to grow food on the moon Maybe it's space architecture. Well, kids love food. They love plants. They love growing things. They love nature. They love buildings and uh, construction. So these are all fantastic opportunities to include kids in whatever your mission is in the space renaissance. So my call to action is simply find a way to attract and include the youngest people in our world the children among you, among us, because it actually will not be just the children at that point. It will be their entire families with their adults, with their parents, their guardians, others in their community, their teachers, their other community leaders. Children can lead us better into the future with their passion, their enthusiasm. And it will also mean that we will benefit from more of their lifespan, more of their lifetime in our efforts as well. If we can continue their enthusiasm and passion for what we're doing, they will join us eventually as adults and make their own fantastic contributions. Thank you for listening and for watching. Here is my contact information. My email is brett at howtobearocketscientist.com. And here's a view of my upcoming book, Goodnight Moonbase, which you can learn more about at that website moonforkids.gr8.com and a sample of some of my other books which are a little challenging to find right now because I'm moving to a different publisher but uh, I hope we will stay in touch if you're interested in those reach out to me and then you can obtain those when I have them available again thank you very much take care and take charge <laughs>